I'm very pleased and honored to be talking to you today. Um, I want to start off by introducing myself. My name is Jin and I'm 18 years old and I'm currently studying the natural science program in Sweden okay. at a gymnasium called uh, Internationale Engelska Gymnasiet in Södermalm. This year I will choose between a few programs at university level mm -hmm. and I'm thinking between engineering and physics and biotechnology. If I'm not mistaken you just picked up your Nobel Prize medal? Yes, just a couple of minutes ago. I mean, <laughs> this is this is a magic box. <laughs> this is the box you get with the, with my name on it wow. and then and then inside and uh, here it is. Here's the famous um, Nobel medal, I mean in gold and it's beautiful. I mean, you want to have a look at it? That's that's what it is. Yeah. And if you turn it, I mean, you see it in the bottom that is my name and uh, with 2019 and um, that's the it Nobel looks Prize very medal special. is very special indeed. Yeah, it's beautiful. How does it feel to have something like this in your possession? Well, you know, I'm still digesting it. It's a, it's an immense honor to receive this. It's also, in a way, a big responsibility. So, um, um, I try to do what I was doing already is, is try to uh, do science and promoting science, and uh, and maybe this is maybe a kind of a. a magic element that will help me to do better. <laughs> Have you planned to store it somewhere special or? You mean here? Well, um, you know, there's always the problem with gold is uh, there's some people that may be attracted by it. So you have to just protect it in a, yeah. in a safe way. <laughs> so I don't know. I mean, I, I, it may end up in the bank so far. <laughs> um, so when you chose your path of career, what were some of your thoughts or? Oh, yeah, I remember. I think, uh, phew, um, I, in my days, mm -hmm. the, the, the number of options were well limited yeah. and, uh, and uh, I kind of like mathematics and mm -hmm. physics and uh, I thought that the best way, I was very undecided what to do, that going to physics would open any possibilities later on. So my advice is just, just do what you, what you like and what you feel you have to do and mm -hmm. don't over plan it too much because anyway, I mean, life is so long, there's so many things that can happen, yeah. so just do what you like. <laughs> yeah, and nothing is really set in stone. You can always change yes, your mind, I suppose. Yes, that's true, yes. And if you have a good background and if you're curious, I mean, you can always move around and um, I think it's very healthy to do this way. When you were starting off your career as a scientist, um, you were in a field that wasn't very popular among astronomers, if I'm... Well, it's more, it's, it was more than that. I mean, nobody were doing what we were doing, yes. very, almost nobody. And, um, well, the, the history of looking for planet is, um, there is a long list of failure in the past because yeah. it's difficult. Yeah, it's very and, difficult. Um, and um, I think we we did a bit better than than the other in the past. And um, and in a way, it was difficult to convince the community to be convincing mm -hmm. um, that indeed we had a planet. We absolutely convinced. We have all the evidence. But you know, it takes time to digest something big like that. And what didn't help is the fact the planet that we detected and didn't fit into the theory because there yeah. were no counterparts in the solar system of a big planet like Jupiter, but very on a very short orbit. So, um, so it was kind of an interesting experience, if I may say this way. Yeah. Um, it's also a, an extraordinary experience because it was living the science. When you, you know, you, when you, you open textbook, you learn about science. Okay, there, there is a data and then there has been a big surprise and then the theory has changed and all this, there is a prediction by theory and then the, the prediction was not matched by the data. So, but you, when you really experience it, I mean, it's a different game. So I was very fortunate to, uh, to experience this kind of full scientific experience where you have the data and the data contradict the theory. So you have to find a new theory, then, then there is new data and on and on and on. So, so that was the beginning of, of, my, of, my, of my work. And um, it was not easy at the beginning. No, I'm just enjoying fully. But at the beginning, it was not easy. I think it's really inspiring that it was your PhD project. Yeah. And that you got a Nobel Prize for your discoveries. Yeah. <laughs> well, but there is something you have to be clear. I mean, there's, there's, there's no age for, for, for being clever. Yeah. I think, uh, and it's even better than that. I think when you're younger, you're more clever because you are, in a way, you're, 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 your ideas are a bit more running wild in a way that you you may be willing to take some path um, that maybe someone a bit wiser and older uh, would be a bit um, I mean worry about because it doesn't fit into what you've learned. So in a way, 
Uh, and if you look back in, the, in most of these uh, Nobel Prize laureates, I mean, uh, usually you see them uh, very old and old gray hair and uh, when they come to get the, 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 the Nobel Prize. But, but practically, when you look back, when actually they did it, when they did the stuff, they did the work uh, that um, then was the, actually the, the, the foundations for, for the prize, they were very young, all these people. Yeah. They were amazingly young. So, so if you look back, having been close to the PhD, PhD is a very intense experience. And there's a lot, a lot of science you're doing. It should not be a surprise. Well, I understand it may be a surprise, but it should not be a surprise. So no, being young is, uh, is good stuff when you want to do science, because this is where you have a lot of good ideas. Yeah. <laughs> So when you were a young scientist and trying to find the motivation and the drive to keep mm -hmm. researching about this project that didn't really promise any success, yes. what did you, was it your environment or your own ah, passion? That's interesting. Well, I think that is a mixture. Mm -hmm. um, well, first, you, you have to be curious. Yes. So I think the curiosity, if, if you have it, you, you have it forever. So, um, and, and, and I was very curious. So, so this, this was still fully, I mean, this is fully the energy of, of the work. Mm. No, the, there is something that you have to learn, but that's kind of for, for everything. You have to learn the failure in a way, because failure is part of the success. So if you only think about being successful or always achieving something, I think you are on the wrong way because there is a lot of, uh, when you want to, to try something, when you want to, um, um, let's say, stimulate or, or exercise your curiosity, mm. um, you have to face that most of the time it doesn't be really much to something significant. It mostly is nowhere because it's very difficult. Uh, but sometimes there is something interesting that pops up. So you have to learn this. I mean, this is what I'm, I'm trying to, um, um, to explain to my student. I say, this is fine. I mean, not being successful here. I mean, you don't have to get always an answer right away. You need to suffer a bit in a way, if I can say it this way, mm. because, because it, this, this makes you stronger and that makes you more prone to resist to this. So usually I think a successful scientist is not a scientist that is successful in the research uh, that they, they're doing. It's a, it's a scientist that know how to cope with, with failure and then building on that uh, can make for some of the, the activity that they're doing a success. So I think that was all about me. That's always one about me. I tend to be very optimistic. Mm. I thought it was great to have this new equipment. I spent a lot of time on it. So I was excited to start the game. And uh, even I was not expected to find anything. I thought it was just cool to do it uh, because it's part of the excitement. And then when I got something strange, um, of course, I get very worried at the beginning. I thought I made something wrong and I had a mistake. Something was not working. But at some point you say, well, maybe it's, it's right. And then, and then, you, 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 then you, 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 you try to, uh, to think through. You try to use all, the, all what you've learned <laughs> about how to treat the data, how to analyze the data in a rational way. And that's it. And you make a major discovery. So, um, so here we should, we should not really, I think I would not be worried about trying always the motivation. So I think I, I would always try to think about, okay, what, why am I interested about science? Um, uh, and, then, and then try to really listen to your kind of little music in your head and, mm. and what you really want and, uh, and let it go and don't over plan it. I, I, planning is bad in science. So I just something I'm always a bit nervous about the people that want to plan research. Ooh, that gives me creeps. I mean, I think we should not plan research. We should let the science go a bit wide and people just, um, being very curious and, and try to, um, to look around whatever they believe they, they have to look around. Mm, interesting. Mm. Thank you. And um, I feel like nowadays science is very separated in a sense. But are you interested in other fields of science, like biology or oh, chemistry? Yeah, I'm curious about everything. That's my problem. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't have enough time in the day, and I am a kind of a heavy sleeper. I, love to, I, I, need my, I need my eight hours of sleep. And now, in terms of science, I'm slowly moving into the question of life in the universe, which mm. is a very, very, very difficult question. Yeah. And I realize that if I want to make progress, I need to learn chemistry better. So this is something that I learned barely when I was just first year of my student. But then I, I forgot everything. So I, I, I'm curious about this. I'm learning, trying to get a little bit of the idea of what, what is important for me to understand. Mm. And I'm, I'm learning both on that, but also very interesting about history of science, history about, about geography, about people. 
So I think I'm a very curious person and kind of, um, uh, and that's, I think it's an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel more interested about how you were as a child. What were some of your interests and do you feel like that, that they're still reflected in your personality yeah, well, today? <laughs> well, I, I think the curiosity uh, is, is, we're born with curiosity. So, uh, and the, the question is, is, is not to instinct it mostly because the, the society tend to, to, um, to have a lot of norms and yeah. you have to, to follow the social rules and yeah. this and usually it tends to go against the freedom and the curiosity. Yeah. So you have to just balance with that. Uh, no, when I was a child, I, I was just extremely curious, very interested about anything, and I, in, in a way too curious because my mother kept telling me I was breaking stuff apart just to understand how it, how it, uh, it, it, it works, like mm. a radio stuff. I was not able to put it back, so it was really pure destruction, actually. Mm. It's not a very positive way to understand. <laughs> but that's what I was. I was very energetic and um, very curious, but also I was like a child. I, 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 was, I was doing sport and playing and just doing any, any, any activity a child would do. So I was not very special. I think almost all the child should be like that. Unfortunately, they are not because some, they're not living in the proper conditions to yeah. have. And I got lucky to be born in Switzerland, which is a very wealthy with good education for everybody. Um, so I get, I think, um, 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 lots of, I mean, the, all the element that could um, um, bring the curiosity to a level where it, 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 it's becoming something useful for society, become, becoming a scientist, well, was there. And I just, I just grew up all of them. Mm. Uh, mm. And so what do you think that the future of this field holds? I think we are, um, we are experiencing of the, um, uh, the, the beginning of a, a new science in a way. And I think this is called the science, science of life in the universe. Mm. And, uh, I'm pretty sure we'll find something very interesting related to life on Mars. Mm. We may find something related to Venus. I mean, Venus was like the Earth. I mean, one billion years old, um, years ago. Um, and um, I mean, something went badly. I mean, the plate can only stop. And, and then it went, it went up that kind of global warming uh, run out um, um, effect. Uh, so, um, so I think this, this, this kind of study of life and how we sit, I mean, um, it's just a great project, and uh, and we're just at the beginning of it. So I I, I really see a, a, an exciting times ahead, and I, I really hope that to live long enough to to see at least some results about 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 that topic. Mm. Okay, thank you so much for this talk. It was very nice speaking to you. It's great. Thank you, Jean. Mm.